Hey crew, welcome back to Community Group Week. The past couple weeks in College Street, we've been talking about Jesus and nothing less. It's our study through the book of Romans. And uh, at the end of Romans 3, we talked about how God's son came to carry our shame, acquit, guilt, and conquer the death that humans deserve, rightfully so. And so who gets the benefits uh, of this type of love? And it's simply the family of God. And so in chapter four, Paul is going to make a case of who gets to be a part of the family of God. He goes all the way back to Genesis uh, to where we see Abraham and the family of Abraham uh, that God would count righteous in front of his sight. And so it wasn't anything that Abraham had did special. Uh, he wasn't just this naturally great guy. Um, Abraham's faith was counted righteous for simply believing that God would act. And so the same goes for us to be a part of the family of God. Uh, it's simply trusting that God will act for us. And he has done that through uh, the life and death and resurrection uh, of his son. And so the grace shared Abraham is actually now extended to you. So Jesus laid down his life uh, so we may experience hope and peace and all types of assurance uh, with God. And so that really fleshed out uh, with two different points that we made uh, last week when we were talking about our sermon, uh, the first one was those who belong to Jesus uh, will never have to worry about uh, their standing with God. And so I think for a lot of us, when uh, we think of God the Father, uh, we're, we're so timid to come to him because we're afraid of, you know, I, I'm, I haven't been at my spiritual best lately. Uh, when really we, we tend to, and it's a, a wrong idea of ours, is when we think, uh, our salvation is this past experience. It's my job to work out uh, my present kinks and the future things that I'm going to mess up with. When in reality, uh, the work of Christ is actively saving us. And so your salvation is working in you presently. And so it, it's nothing about your efforts or what will stand that can draw you near to the throne, but it's actually everything that Jesus has already accomplished for us. And so uh, how freeing is it of an idea that uh, I don't have to worry about whether I can come to the Father or not, whether I'm having a good or bad day spiritually. Uh, I can come to God the Father at my lowest through Christ working through me. And so the beauty is I, I never have to wonder if I'm worthy enough to go to God because I know that His Son is worthy and His Son covers me with His righteousness. Anytime I mess up, I I'm not on trial for what I've done because I I'm in the family room of God. And so uh, for any of you out there, I just encourage you to, to stop seeing yourself as the enemy. You, you are no longer the enemy if you have placed your trust in Christ and everything is taken care of in the family room. And the second point is this, uh, God's love for us goes way far beyond human complexity. And so uh, his love for us looks so much different than uh, human love could ever equate for. And so what Paul is trying to do uh, with verses six through 11 is just once again, uh, showing us that we can have assurance that we are reconciled back to the Father. Uh, verse 6 of, or while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Uh, and what I love about that verse is it's just showing that uh, it, it doesn't say that, uh, you know, while we were uh, working our way back to his good favor, it says while we were still weak, Christ died for us. And then Paul does a great job of just going through examples of how rare is it for uh, a human to die for a righteous person. And then for a good person, we would even have to consider. Um, but yet while we were still enemies of God, that is when Christ died for us. And so that's a countercultural message. We don't like to love uh, people that are enemies of us. We, we want to get away from people that are enemies of us. Um, but that's not just Paul saying that, but that's true to what Jesus was saying in the Sermon on the Mount, where he says, uh, you have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say, uh, pray for those who persecute you and love your enemies as well. And when you read texts like that, you're thinking, Jesus, why would you say something like that? Um, and it's simple because not only was Jesus just talking about enemies, but he was talking about you and I. We were once enemies of God's will because we chose our will for ourselves. And so uh, Christ became sin who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God. And so I hope that encourages you. I hope this leads to good conversation. Uh, and I hope that you really do know that if you are a son or daughter of God, you have been reconciled to the Father. Thank you, guys. And I hope you all have a great week.